Last week on Relentless. We want, wanted more plays per game. Oh, let's go, let's go. It's a good thing being out here on this football field doing something I love on my birthday. Happy birthday to you. Go get it. Go get it. There you go. Go get it. You got a strum here. That's all you need. Practice for the Bobcats has a slightly more energetic tone than in past years. But the no huddle offense isn't the only driving beat in Peden Stadium. New for 2011, music pumped over the stadium speakers to give players a little extra motivation during the long days of August. You know, it's uh, so far it's been a it's been an okay playlist. There's uh, there's a couple songs where it's just. Kind of like, whoa, what is this, you know? And uh, but no, it's it's been great to have some music out there, you know, get get some guys going, and um, it's uh, it's been good. But of course, everyone is a critic. I hate listening to country music during practice. Oh, See, no, you no. should listen to my music because no, I listen no, no. to yours every day. Um, some people, um, like they haven't they haven't opened up their, you know, what I'm saying they haven't broadened their horizon. And some of the music just so old, it's from like the 16th century or something. Here we go, right hand. Take it easy. I have the eight track. My brother did anyway. I have the eight track. Take it easy. I've been Dude, talking this to stuff Grimms, is, This man. stuff is driving me crazy. I'll talk to Grooms. stuff every day. We do, man. Talk to Grooms, I'll make a little mix. Finally, we got a decent playlist out here. While the music lightens the mood, make no mistake, as opening day gets closer, the Bobcats are all business. Over the past several seasons, Ohio's wide receivers have been one of the team's most impressive units. Three Bobcat wideouts have made the jump to the NFL in the past two years alone. Highlighted by Taylor Price's third round selection, by the New England Patriots Hello. in 2010. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Guess who it was? Patriots. Yeah. <laughs> Once again in 2011, the receiving core is one of Ohio's strongest and deepest groups. There's likely another pro or two in this bunch. The man charged with teaching these young men the ropes is Dwayne Dixon. He has NFL experience himself and was named Arena Football's Iron Man of the Year in 1988. As a coach, he sent more than his share of guys to the league and stops at Ohio and Florida. His coaching style is a perfect fit for his players. Lock him up, lock him up, lock him up, lock him up. Got to be more careful. Over the top, over the top, yes. He never shuts up, like you go to sleep, fall, like fall asleep, just hear his, his voice just yelling in our head. It's not even yelling, just, just harping on every little, little detail. Like he doesn't, he doesn't miss a thing. Hind tight, 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 hind tight. You know, actually, if my alarm clock's not set and it feels like I'm late, you know, my eyes would just pop open out of nowhere I've, and I just hear, Dio, Dio, are you awake? You know, I just hear him in the back of my mind all the time. We do impersonations all the time at home and everything. Monday, best day of the week. Great day to get better. <laughs> yeah, he cool, he's cool. Going in, I want enthusiasm. My thing is I try to be enthusiastic about anything I do, and I do it with passion. I care about them as a person, and they know that, even though I, I rib them sometimes. And uh, try not to be too sarcastic, but sometimes uh, we have fun. 
Everybody uh, behind the second line. Positive Why is that so hard? <laughs> yeah, I know you can't stand behind the line. You're going to have about four inches over. It's too early for cracking jokes. You're going to have about four, four inches hanging over, size 18. Behind the line, behind the line. While Dixon never stops talking to his guys, one young Bobcat receiver has heard that voice from breakfast to bedtime for nearly 19 years. Dixon, wherever the ball is, come over here, outside the hash. I mean, it is cool at some points in time, but you know, like, he's gonna ride you no matter what, cause I, like, I'm his son, but I know, I mean, I just take it as constructive criticism just to get better. I mean, he rides me pretty hard, I'm not gonna lie. You know, he gets the same treatment they get and, and vice versa, so it's fun knowing that he is my son and having the opportunity to compete at the Division One level. But at the same time, he knows he's not going to get any preferential treatment. Uh, I'm coach while it's Phil or here at the university. I get home, I'm dad. Hey, Dix, yeah. anytime the ball's on the opposite hash, uh -huh. if it's one yard inside that hash, right? See the hash? Yeah. Look, that's the hash, and the ball's one yard off the hash, I'm one yard outside the hash. Sometimes I ask him, how was his practice today? You know, as though I'm dad. I kind of split personalities on him, and he's trying to figure out what's going on. And he'll say, hey, I had a good practice, or I did some things here and there. But, you know, I said, well, okay, well, make sure the coach that sees you working hard. So he gets it that way. There's plenty of competition at defensive back. For redshirt junior Ryan Clark, competition has become a way of life. You know, I knew I wasn't coming around for a scholarship yet. They made me a preferred walk-on, so you know, I just came for the education and you know, the football program. 85 men out of 100-plus get the privilege of an Ohio scholarship in exchange for their efforts on the field. The rest, like Joey Inks, have to walk on with no financial assistance. They play for a much simpler reason. Because I love the game, and I love to be a Bobcat, and um, I mean, I just... I love Saturday nights. Everyone doesn't like practice, but practice makes perfect. And I mean, it's all for Saturday. And I don't know if I didn't have football, I don't know what I'd be doing right now. I mean, football is my life, and I'm always going to be a Bobcat for sure. Walk-ons have all the same duties as scholarship players: the same practices, the same coaching, the same time spent, and their odds of crossing the goal line with the ball or winning a game are thin when they first report. It's on you. Carry the weight, baby. Carry the weight. Keep working. Keep working. There you go. Good. You start at the bottom. And no matter what, no matter how old you are, there's always somebody else that comes in, you know, from either junior college or recruited out of high school. And you basically, you, you're coming from the bottom the whole time, and you have to keep working. And you can't let it get to you. It's hard, though. You got to do everything right as a walk-on. Um, no one's it's not going to come for you, and uh, you got to work a lot harder than everyone else because you have a lot to prove and stuff. Coming in as a walk-on, you know, you kind of have to do extra things that, you know, to, to get in the coach's eye and everything, and to be able to earn a scholarship is the best thing that can happen to a college football player. The track record here is pretty good. I mean, we're averaging somewhere between two and three a year kids earning scholarships and I think knowing that over the years it motivates kids that it's uh, that, that it can be done it can be done and that seeing that happen every year has got to be motivation for those kids that are in the program that are walk-ons that that say there's a light at the end of the tunnel if I keep working hard and find my way to the field and uh, be a contributor that this can happen to me hey mom guess what I got my scholarship finally yeah they just told me at the, at the end of practice <laughs> I know, right? I called my mom, and uh, she immediately was so happy and started crying. Tears of joy, I guess she was saying. And she was just so excited because she knows how hard I've worked for everything that I've got. Yeah, I'll give you a call after, after I get showered and stuff. I figure I'll just call and tell you, make you cry a little bit. <laughs> he battled through an injury, yeah, and he, he continued to work in the weight room. I continued to learn the defense. Um, and uh, it knows it very well. And uh, whether it's run or pass, he's uh, become very knowledgeable. So he studied the game. And uh, obviously, it's paid off for him. All right, I will. All right, bye. Love you, too. Bye.
This could be a long one. I've been scrubbing on this one spot for about 15 minutes now. Stickers on a helmet huh? are a sure sign the first game is around the corner. Helmet sticker night has become a tradition with the Ohio football equipment staff. Just one more step along the road to Las Cruces. Stripes goes first. Flatten it out, make sure I get all the air bubbles out. The Arch to Ohio's go next. Max sticker. While it may seem fairly straightforward, the stickers don't always cooperate. This one's, this one's lower than this one. That's what I'm talking about. i got to start all over again. The uh, athletic trainers have stopped in to help us out a little bit. John Bowman doesn't work them hard enough down there, so they're going to come down here and sticker some helmets with us, have some fun. We heard that <laughs> there was a sticker party, and so we wanted to help our team out. For Paul Hershey, I, th I think that'll I think that'll work. Are you yeah. sure? Some stickers mean more than others. One sticker on Ohio's 2011 helmets means more than all. First time I met Marcel Williamson, we were moving into the dorms at Washington over the summer. He actually had dreadlocks and everything. Um, you know, he's just a big, happy, nice guy. You know, help you with anything you needed. But when I got here, that was the first first person I met. And I was like, man, I was like, man, he's big. Who is this guy? It's like, that's our nose guard. I was like, oh, man, I got to meet him. You know what I'm saying? He, and ever since then, I just, I, just, I just loved him ever since then. Oh, man, he made me laugh all the time, all the time. And uh, since I got here on campus, I fell in love with him. Marcellus was just, he was a great person on and off the field. Off the field, you know, he was, he was just so full of energy all the time. And, you know, he always just, you know, life of the party pretty much, you know, it's cliche, but he really was. He never seemed like anything was wrong with him, you know. He was never mad or upset, you know, he was always positive and good to be, great guy to be around. <laughs> it was awesome playing behind him because you learned so much, you know, because he was such a great nose guard. I played for 27 straight games for us, um, started all 27 of them. Most of the other guys will tell you he was a hard worker, like, at night he would he would be doing push-ups night before game. I'm like, man, you gotta you gotta chill out on that. And he would he would say, no, no, man, I'm good, I'm good. And he would just do it like that. He was an intense guy. He was an intense guy. He didn't like a lot of fooling around in between the lines, cause that's a, uh, he feel like that's a place of business. Anytime we're in between the lines, it's a place of business. You know, he was enthusiastic, like to say the least. Uh, you know, he would be excited out there, just yelling, screaming. This night right here is our night, y'all. We gotta hold it down. Y'all know we owe you, baby. So we owe you. Let's go. We owe you on three, baby. One, two, three. We owe you. Let's go. And I mean, he was very fierce. You know, he was always talking, always, you know, letting the letting the opponents know though if, if they were if he was getting the best of them. That's for sure. Great A guy. I mean, he's a, he's an awesome guy. Always taking notes in class, taking notes in meetings, practice hard, work hard kind of guy. And just a total shame. Total shame. And breaking news tonight at Ohio University. The university confirming for 10 TV tonight that a football player has died. Marcellus Williamson was from the Cleveland area. He was a starting defensive lineman last season. You know, it's tragic when someone young and full of energy uh, passes, and, and probably especially tragic to those within his immediate uh, football families. You know, I like to think of it kind of as, you know, maybe God needed a nose guard and he got a really good one. <laughs> I believe it was a blood clot in his lungs. Um, as far as I know, he was he called the ambulance himself. Um, and it was before you before he was going to work. You know, it's just you can't. So you know, it's hard to take in at a moment like that. You know, it's just you're just like. You know, you don't really know what to say, I guess. Our uh, captain, Jeff King, uh, he called me up and I answered the phone and he says, Marcellus passed away. And, you know, I kind of kind of paused for a second because I didn't really, didn't really set in. And uh, I mean, I just took it from there and I was like, man, I'll call you back. You know, I just, just sit down and kind of take it in because it kind of caught me off guard. Oh, man. I mean, instantly I put a picture up on Facebook, a uh, picture that, that we took in New Orleans at the last bowl game. I, I put a picture up in remembrance for him. And, um, and I still,
I can't get rid of his cell phone out of my phone yet. It's still in there. Frank's phone call that night, when he told me he died, I haven't erased it yet. The next day, I sent a text to all the D-linemen that we lost a brother in arms. And please don't forget what he meant to us and the team. I haven't gotten rid of that text yet. I, I, uh, uh, at some point, I got let go, but I, I always thought that I could always told him more how much he meant to me. I never did have a chance to do that. I loved the kid, and, and I thought it was great, and I told him that. I wish I would have told him that more because um, I loved him like a son. I recruited him and he played so hard for me and he, he graduated, he did everything you asked and you're a great player, Marcellus, and I love you to death. I just wish I would have said it a lot more. I still can't believe to this day that he was, that he just gone like that, but I, I mean, I, I know he's in a better place and I wish he was here right now, but I know right now he's looking over us and letting us know that we gotta keep our heads up and keep fighting for what he always wanted, it was the championship and get us there. Big Marcellus, man, you know, like everyone else will say he was he was just that guy. He was, you know, exciting, good to be around and, you know, yeah, for sure we're dedicating the year to him. I know we had the six deuce on the uh, back of our helmet uh, as a sticker and uh, we had the banner up there. Uh, should be hanging up for every every home game that we play. Look up there and see that kind of makes me when I'm feeling tired and wanting to slack off to kind of say, you know, I got to push through this because it'd be something he would do. I mean, I always tell my kids, um, you know, you got a, you're in a foxhole defending your life. Who do you want in your foxhole? I really believe that everybody in the team would have Marcellus in the foxhole. And I think that's what he left us, that there's nobody on this team that would not want him in the foxhole because they knew that he would be there for them. And that's, I can't think of a, a higher honor than, the, than, the, than a kid or a program to say that. And I would want him next to me too in the foxhole. Nah, man, I love you, Marcellus. I love you, bro. Well, it's the Ox Roast. It's the uh, final closing of camp. Biggest thing is to get everyone together, all the fall sports used to come in. Usually, it started back in the day, it just used to be the football. I used to dig actual pig in the ground and cook it up, but you know, it grew to a, a huge event. It's, uh, it's really fun to get, get all the fans around, and uh, it's a great day. Look at that technique. Perfect technique right there. The Ox Roast is an Ohio athletic tradition dating back 31 years. It signals the end of August camp. It's a chance for this team and this town to hit the Peden Stadium playground together. One last break before the 12 tests that will be used to grade their season. My right or my left? Oh! We got guys playing cornhole, guys doing the obstacle course, the bounce house, you know, play and catch with the kids. You know, the kids, you know, they're at the tunnel, they're always waiting on us to come out and give us high fives and that kind of thing. But, you know, we don't really get much interaction with them outside of when we're walking in and out of the locker room. Take two steps and run this out. Just like that. It's fine, okay? All right, you can do that. I'm going to throw you the ball. All right. Ready? Set. Go. Oh! Let's go! They really like to meet the players and interact with them, have fun with them, and get to play football with them. It's just a nice little community function that we all get to spend time and get to know our community and the people, the fans, and everybody that supports us. I want to start from right here. One, two, Three, <laughs> camp's a long, drawn-out process kind of thing, and you know this officially marks the end of camp. Once we can get out here and relax a little bit, have some fun, and you know now it's time to buckle down for next week. Only three short weeks after moving into Tiffin Hall for training camp, the underclassmen are once again packing up and moving out this time to their fall quarter dorms. It's a ritual that they've become accustomed to during their time in Athens. I just need you to sign your name right here, please. Thank you. Yeah, we just started off at Tiffin, which was our old dorms. We moved out from there. Now I've got all my stuff here right now, and I have to move it up to the third floor. 
after I move it up to the third floor, I then have to see where they put me. I have no idea if they put me in Boyd still, if they put me on a different floor or anything. I have no idea. The big men can't go on without their television and the Xbox, and uh, you always have to bring quite a few blankets because, you know, we like our air conditioning. It is a very big hassle, but uh, being older now, being a second year student here, I know not to pack that much. Packing light is essential for these bobcats, and there's one thing they can all agree on. Stairs. <laughs> Everyone hates the stairs. What? Hey! <laughs> kill you. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of stairs, and uh, usually I can get it all in one trip, so I mean the trips aren't that bad, but I mean just going up and down the stairs is probably the worst part. Move is really never fun, so I wouldn't call it smooth, going up the stairs and everything without no elevator, so once you get everything in here, get it carried away, you'll be fine. Though. Athletes aren't the only ones packing. The Ohio equipment staff is also busy, preparing everything for the upcoming trip. Uh, we're trying to get the box truck loaded to send it on out to New Mexico State. <clears throat> we're giving the truck driver four days to get out and three to get back, so... It's about a 30-hour drive. For the team, it's a four-hour plane ride to Las Cruces. For all their stuff, it's a somewhat slower trip. We're pushing. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Push directly forward. There you go. There he is. You got pull, I'm pulling. Come on. What's the problem down here? What's the hold up? Speed it up. Got a game on Saturday. <laughs> Hey, how many managers does it take to move from speed loader for a Gatorade? Let's go! One, two, three. There it is. What took so long? Only four days left to be relentless. Uh, should be it. <laughs> 